School Y. More, 300. We just see some ground here. And there it is. Welcome back to Arcade. I am Super Tommy, and in this video, we're going to look at using Phaser 3.50 to make a side scrolling platformer. And we're going to do it in TypeScript. So we're uh, going to install Phaser 3.50 from beta. We've actually already done that in this project. Check out our previous video, the Getting Started with Phaser 3.50 video, if you want to see how to install beta packages from NPM. Now, depending on when you watch this video, Phaser 3.50 may already have been released. It is very soon to come out, um, but uh, now, when I'm recording this video, so it may be out by the time you actually see this. And if that's the case, then just a, a normal NPM install Phaser will get you 3.50. And we'll have updated our um, uh, templates here. We're using the Phaser 3 TypeScript parcel template to bootstrap this project. So I'll just show here that we've actually already installed Phaser 3.50 using beta.11 that came out recently as of the recording of this video. And we're getting very near the final release here for Phaser 3.50. That's why we're making these videos, because I think the API is not going to change too much and uh, from here on. And what we're going to talk about is going to apply um, even when you watch this video weeks or months from now um, past the initial phase of 3.50 release. So we're making a side scrolling platformer, so we need some art. And the two sources we're going to use is from Game Art Guppy. Let me go smaller. Oh, there's... Um, Vicky Wenderlich, who is the uh, person who created all these art here in Game Art Guppy. Now, all the art here is free. They used to be paid, but they are free now. And we use some assets here in our um, TypeScript Phaser 3 book that you can get at the Phaser blog. Go to blog.arcade.co, or I guess I can just show you. Blog.arcade.co. We have our um, Infinite Runner in Phaser 3 book that uses art from Game Art Guppy. And we go over making a Phaser 3 game uh, in TypeScript. So if you're more of a beginner, that book could be for you, as well as the other one in modern JavaScript. Just go to blog.arcade.co. So we're going to use a penguin. It is December, and so to be a little more festive, we're going to use a penguin and, and, uh, and a winter ice world. So let's look for some assets here. I think there's a search. Maybe there's not right here. Uh, nope, there's no search. I just go to characters. So she's got a lot here in Game Art Guppy. We're going to use the snowman eventually too. But just get the penguin. Here's the penguin. you got to add it to cart and then fill out all that stuff. But uh, there's no there's no credit card to enter or anything like that. This is all free. Uh, site's a little bit broken these days. I don't think it's well maintained. But nonetheless, we're going to use this penguin sprite. It's free to download, so go get it at GameArtGuppy.com. Look for this penguin. It's got a few animations there. I'm going to go over creating an atlas and uh, adding those animations to your Phaser 3.50 game. Now, for the tile set, we're going to use Kenny's Ice World assets. So let's just type in Ice World. We should be able to search for it. Maybe. Platformer Art Winter. Yep, this one. Uh, so this one, you can just download this. This is also free. Kenny produces great work and um, uh, makes it all, a bit, uh, not all, but a lot of it for free um, with the Creative Commons Z 1.0 license. So it is um, free to use in any project you want, commercial or otherwise. So those are the two main assets we're going to use in this video. So download these tiles. Now, we already have them in our project, just to prepare here. And we're going to use uh, Tiled, this Tile Map Editor, to actually make our um, Tile Map. So download this if you don't have it already. This is also free. And let me close this window. And now we bootstrap with our Phaser 3 TypeScript parcel template. There's instructions for setting it up here. We've already created this project already to, to start. And it's a very simple project. Um, if you've initially run it, we're already running it. What you get is this, just the basic phaser 3 logo bouncing around this is the hello world scene where we're going to replace all of this but 
back to these assets. So we've downloaded the penguin here and it comes in this folder of various pictures. Now this is actually much bigger. We already resized it down. And we're using Texture Packer to make our atlas. Um, so what you see here is various animations. Now we're gonna take the die animation, the jump, um, we're not gonna do slide and walk. So now she has it in both um, at X2, which is a iPhone retina display convention. There's now like at X3 these days and, and Android has some different uh, conventions, but that's why you do see this at X2. We're just gonna use the normal non at X anything or at 2X, um, no high resolution graphics in this tutorial. I'm just gonna use the basic size and we did shrink them down because I think they're much bigger or maybe not, maybe we didn't shrink these down. But you may have to, it just depends on um, whether you have the paid texture packer license or not. In the free texture packer, you, there's a limited size you can use and we're keeping this tutorial um, using free tools for those who are only able to use the free versions. So that's the penguin, we're gonna create an atlas out of this. And then in Kenny's assets, we have this tile set. The, the, the individual tiles here, if you wanted to um, select a subset of tiles to make your game a little more efficient if not using every single image, we are just going to use the sheet here, which is all of the tiles pre-made for you. These are 70 by 70 tiles and we're going to put this into tiled and then come out with a tile map. So what we want to do is actually move uh, the files we're actually going to use into our assets folder. If you've seen our other videos, what we do is we put how our um, project is set up. Anything in the public folder is accessible at the root. So when we want to load something, you can just do uh, slash whatever, but we put in assets just to make it more organized. And we're not gonna use these other images, we just these other folders. We put it in here just to, to demonstrate uh, what the files you're gonna download from Game Art Guppy and from Kenny will look like. And we will use the snowman eventually, but not in this video, in future parts. Okay, so first let's start by making an atlas. Okay, so we have Texture Packer open here. You can download Texture Packer actually if you uh, need to use this. Um, I think it's code and web. Code and web tools for game developers. They have a texture packer, this logo. You can download it and use it. Um, there is a free version that we're gonna show you how to use to make the assets you need for phase of three. But you can also pay for this. Uh, it's a it, it, it's a great tool for, for uh, texture packing if you can afford it. Um, but anyway, so that's texture pack. This is the one we're using from code and web. So back here. All right, so let's actually make a new project here. And then we wanna add uh, sprites in here. Okay, so we wanna add sprites in here. So let's click this add sprites. You can also drag and drop them in here. And let's go here, public. So we had our pictures in here. If you remember looking at VS Code, we just had them um, in our project under public. So we're gonna take penguin die, we will use these later, we'll take hurt, jump, and we're not using the at 2x versions. I'm not gonna use slide in this tutorial. And walk, so now open, and there it is. There it goes, so now we're choosing phaser JSON array um, so that we can use it in this free version. If you chose phaser three, I think you need the actual paid version, but Phaser JSON, JSON array will work just fine. So cancel. And now when we want to publish, let's click this publish button up here. Just make sure we're in the right folder here. We're gonna go to public assets. And let's call this penguin, penguin. And boom, okay, and there it is. So now you have all your sprites that you added in this sprite atlas. Now let's go here. So you've got this PNG and then this JSON file representing where each frame is in your PNG. And we're gonna need to use that 
when we load our animations with a penguin and just adding the penguin into the game. And so let's do a quick test to make sure what we have is working. Let's uh, delete this. We're going to make a game scene. Let's trash. In our scenes folder, let's make a new file. We'll call it game.ts for TypeScript. Uh, first, let's, let's first um, collapse that. More room. Let's import phaser from phaser. Then we're going to do export default class game extends phaser dot scene. So we're making a new scene called game based on phasers scene class. And let's give it a constructor. And now we need to make sure we give our scene an actual ID. If we don't, phaser will give it an ID, but then we don't know what it's called. Then we can't uh, go to that scene if we have different scenes like a title screen or a game over uh, screen or something. If we want to go back to game, you need to know the actual uh, ID or key for your scenes. We're going to call it game. And now we have a preload. To preload the assets that uh, we have in our assets folder in public. So let's load our uh, penguin atlas. So we do this dot load dot atlas. First thing is a key. So we're going to call this penguin just penguin. Call this whatever you want just to uh, give our atlas an ID. And then the second thing here is the texture URL, which we have assets slash penguin.png and then our atlas url is that json file that uh, texture packer produced it produced two files the png file and the json file so assets.penguin.json right let's just mouse let's just uh, go back here png and the json file that's the two things we need back here in game so now that's loading the atlas. So now we'll have loaded the uh, picture or the, the texture. Then we can now use it in create. So let's just go this.add.image. Let's do penguin. We'll load the whole thing. Uh, let's, right, we need to give an XY first. Let's just pick the middle of the screen here with height. So this is um, object destructuring on the scale manager. Now, if you've seen some other videos, uh, what this is, is just syntactical shortcut for, what you can also do is this, scale.width, the const height, this.scale.height, which gets the width and height out of the scale manager, which represents the width and height of our game. So, uh, yeah, well, we'll fix this error, but basically this window where our game is, where this phaser logo is bouncing around. That is the width and height of our game. All right, so we're going to use the shortcut syntax. And here we're going to put it at half width and half height, which will be the center of the screen. And penguin is the key that we did here for the atlas. Let's refresh that. Let's see. OK, I got to restart my uh, parcel dev server. All right, there's actually an error because we deleted our Hello World um, scene here because we don't, we're not using it. We got to replace this with game. Let's delete that. So what we're going to do is import game from scenes game. And then here, instead of the Hello World scene, we're going to use the game scene. So this is the standard um, phaser bootstrapping um, where you make a new phaser.game instance here, down here. And you pass in a config, which you know uh, sort of defines how you want your game to be, including the width, the height. Uh, so type here is either WebGL or Canvas. And what physics engine to use? So we will use Matter.js right now. The template uh, defaults to Arcade. We're going to change that in a future video. So let's so let's save. So that's good. Let's refresh this. There's an error. Unexpected. Uh, so I have an, in another window here. I'm just running the terminal. So let's just reload that. Okay. And there is our penguin. So it gives. This is the first frame, I think. Let's just check. Yep, it's that guy. So if you wanted to give it different frames, you pass it into the 
fourth parameter here, fourth argument, as you can see, is the frame, which is a string or a number. Now, it's a number if using a sprite sheet where every frame index is uh, starts at zero and goes to whatever the maximum number of frames you have is. And so if we wanted to give it something different, what we would put in here is from the JSON file here, you see these file names. And you can just pick one of these. So let's just pick penguin die3.png. Let's go back to game. And if we wanted to use a different frame from our atlas, we would do that. And this should reload. And there it is. So now it's using the penguin die 03 frame. OK, so that is working. We've loaded our atlas. And now we can um, create different sprites, or images, actually images different images out of our atlas. So that's good. Now we're going to use this later to create our actual penguin character. Although, yeah, we'll do that later. Um, first, let's make an actual tile map to see. So we're going to delete that. No more penguin. So now we're going to make a tile map. So we're going to use this sheet here, if you recall. So let's go to tiled. Let's do a new map. We're going to do a 50 by 15 tiles. You can adjust the size of your, your, your world. Basically, it could be infinite as well. But this is 70 by 70 because that is what our uh, tile sheet is set to. That's what the ice world asset uses. So that's what we're doing, 70 by 70. Now, yours could be 64 if you're using a different asset. 64 by 64, or 32 by 32, 128 by 128, whatever it is that your tile set uses. You can just determine that either mathematically or looking at the individual files that make up your tile sheets. Doing CSV, well, this is good. Uh, save as. And now let's go to our side scroller, go to public, go to assets, and let's save this. We're just going to call this, call this game. All right, so here we are in tile. This is our world for our game uh, map. Got one tile layer. We have no tile sets. Let me let me go on this side. Uh, make a new tile set, and let's call this. I don't know. Let's call this Ice World. Uh, let's go to source, and we want to go to our project here, public, and we actually want to use. Okay, so let's for simplicity. Let's move. Go back to our to the S code here and move this sheet into our assets, move into our assets. Just keep everything inside assets that we're going to use for the game. And these are just all our other uh, downloaded files. Let's go back here. Let's go to assets. I'm going to use sheet. So this is the tile sheet. Click open. Ice world, great. We want to make sure we are embedding this in map over here. Uh, if you don't, if you for some reason skip this step, you know, you went ahead of me. You can always click this embed in, I think it's one of these buttons to embed tile set in map. 70 by 70, this is good. No margin, no spacing, great. Now your tile set could be different. So depending on where you got your tile set or how you constructed it, that could be different. But ours has no margin and no spacing. And that's good, okay. So here we are. So now, so these are the tiles, right? So now let's uh, just make some floor here. Can zoom in a bit. Let's just uh, make some floor. Let's see. There's probably shortcuts here with tiled. I'm definitely not a expert with tiled. Um, so, and there's a lot of tricks in tiled that that are that you have to read the documentation to find out, and I have not done that. So let's just make. You know, I'm just going to make like a four tall floor here. I think there's like a terrain tool in tile that where you can do this a lot quicker. It's probably up here somewhere. Um, okay, so let's do that. Now we're going to do this and just load it. And I'll show you how to debug some potential problems you may have if you're using tile maps, uh, whether in phases of or anything else. There it is. Now that's, I'm gonna, I saved it. Now we need to actually export as a JSON for phaser. File, export, and now make sure we export to our side scroller here, public 
assets game json which is do save now that has exported a game json file let's go back to vs code right here so this describes our tile map very good now let's go back to game you know myself back here to the right let's collapse that so now we want to actually load this tile map okay so this dot load load the image this is going to be the actual sheet that we're using and let's just call it the tiles um, and we're doing assets sheet.png i believe so it's it's uh this file right here yep sheet.png now this dot load dot tiled tiled tile map tile json this is that game the json file that we um just exported out of tiled and so this is assets game dot json okay so that's what we need to um load the tile map and the image we're using the tile sheet image that we're using into phaser here so now actually just to make this a little easier viewing let's save this save this let's go to main let's make this a little bit smaller you know let's just make it 600 by 600 we're going to use a square so we have more room for code okay great let's go back to game all right, so now we have our, our tiles and our tile map. Now let's actually create a map. So we're gonna go map this dot, let's use make dot tile map. And we're gonna pass it a config here. And the key we're gonna use is the uh, JSON that we just lo loaded here. We gave it tile map. So down here for key, we wanna use tile map. Now, we have the map loaded. Now we want to make a tile set. So add tile set. What is it doing? Add, add tile set image. Now the tile set name is going to be the um, tiles over here, right? This, uh, no, no, this is actually from in the docs have improved in phase of the current 50. So this is the name of the tile set I specified in the map data. So let's just go here, which is uh, in tile sets, we name this. So here, ice world. So that's what we want as this one. And then the second key here is the key. So this key actually corresponds to this image that we loaded, which we call tiles. Okay, now from our uh, tile, our map with the tile set image here, actually we're gonna have to use this, so let's do tile set. Now we can make our map layer. So our map layer is actually this thing here, tile layer, actually let's rename this. Let's call this ground, save. Now every time you save, you gotta export for your changes to exist in the JSON file that we're loading and using to generate our tile map. Okay, so now we do uh, ground, this for the ground layer. So map.create layer. So in previous versions of phaser, there was create dynamic layer, create static layer. It has now been consolidated in phaser 3.50 to just create layer. Now the layer ID is the name of the, of the layer that we just did, which is ground. Tile set is this tile set that we just added there and we're good. So this should render. Let's actually, we don't need the, we don't need that yet. So let's it should render, and you see there's nothing here. Now why is that? So that is the case because it actually renders from from x y zero zero here, and we made a ground at the bottom. So the, you're basically seeing this part of the screen. So there's nothing there. So now let's prove it. Let's take some ice blocks here. I should do this. Let's do this save exports so now if you run into this issue where you sort of put some ground down and you load your town map and you see nothing you're like what is going on just put something in like basically every part of the town map if you want to like debug 
So can I reproperty? Okay, I think we just need to refresh. Oh, I lied. Uh, let's see. Maybe I'm just gonna restart my dev server here. Oh, actually, this could be related to the spelling error. Spelling errors will get you every time. All right, refresh. Okay, here it is. So now you see it. So what was happening was it was showing you the, the tile map at the top left corner, but we had all our ground at the bottom. So if we were to scroll down, we would see it. And um, if I prove that, this dot cameras dot main, uh, let's see, it, what is it called? Uh, offset. Uh, can, I, can I move it? Oh yes, scroll X, that's what I'm looking for. Scroll X, I don't know, let's say 100. Oh wait, I meant Y. Scroll Y. Let's make it more, 300, we can just see some ground here. And there it is, so you know, it's the camera was just at the top left and so we didn't see it. So that could be a problem you're having in a different project, that could be why, so do try that out. Okay, so now we've done all of that. So that's it for part one here. Come back for the next video. We're gonna add our penguin uh, character to the game here, put some animations on him or her and have him move around and do some collision with matter physics.